we will continue now with the analysis of 1D spectrum. So, in the last class uh, we saw that what are the different steps which are required to be used for analyzing an MR, interpreting an MR spectrum. So, this is what is shown here. Uh, so, we basically saw that we have to look at not only the we should first of all we should of course, know the molecular formula, then we should know the types of protons, we should know the J coupling pattern and the relative intensity or peak area. And when we take all of these together, we can now get the uh, total structure of the molecule based on which satisfies the number of proton types. So, that means, our target here is that if you know the molecular formula, you know the number of hydrogens and that number of hydrogens or proton should match uh, in the final structure which you predict from based on spectrum. So, typically it is good to have a knowledge of where the different chemical shifts come. So, this is just a schematic rough diagram for a, a few set of functional groups. So, you can see here the different functional groups have very characteristic ranges of chemical shift and they always come in that particular range. So, very 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 rarely uh, ra they will come out of this range. So, if you know this particular range in, in your mind, uh, then it is very easy to looking at the peak, uh, molecule, the peak of the uh, particular molecule, you can figure out what are the functional groups present. Uh, although we may not always require this particular values to know by heart, but it is good to have a, a some kind of a picture in mind that where the different functional groups come. Uh, so, that when you analyze the data, you know uh, you can get a fair idea of the structure. So, for example, let us look at this one the methyl groups. You see, this is a methyl proton. Uh, typically, the methyl protons always come between 0 to 2. A very uh, this one, unless they are, of course, attached to an electronegative atom, which we will see. But if they are not attached to electronegative atom, they are an aliphatic part. So, you see, suppose this R is CH2. So, this CH3, CH2, this CH3 group will al almost always come somewhere between 0 to 2 ppm. So, methyl groups are uh, very easy to find out from NMR spectrum. Uh, this, the, they, can, they are very strong peaks, they are singlets or in multiplets, but they are very strong peaks uh, and therefore, uh, they all they are because of this three equivalent hydrogens, the area of the peak is also very high. It is usually the tallest peaks in the NMR spectrum is typically come from methyl groups uh, in a molecule. Uh, then now, if you go to the methyl substituted, for example, if this are is a, t a secondary carbon or a tertiary carbon, then there is a slight downfield shift uh, to the uh, proton. But even then, uh, with a tertiary or a uh, secondary carbon group, the hydrogen atom comes somewhere between uh, 1 to 2 ppm. Now, once you start attaching electronegative groups, so for example, let us say we have a ketone, if you have hexy carbonyl group and to that there is a CH and this H now get slightly downfield shifted. So, remember the word downfield means towards the left, upfield means towards the right. So, it gets slightly downfield shifted and you see now it comes somewhere in this particular range between 2 to 3 ppm. So, this is for typically for a ketone uh, group and uh, attached to this uh, hydrogen carbon attached to a ketone group. Now, if you look at now more electronegative atoms <coughs> such as oxygen, carbon halides, halogens or nitrogens, you see this CH the hydrogens, they are not directly attached to oxygen, but they are attached to a carbon and the carbon is attached to an oxygen. So, there is an inductive effect of this oxygen on this hydrogen and that makes it go downfield because of this is oxygen, chlorine and nitrogen, they are more uh, electronegative in nature. So, that will cause a downfield shift and this hydrogen comes somewhere between 2 to 4 ppm. So, this is uh, typically the range observed. So, what happens is uh, you know it typically if you look at a, any peak uh, as we go further we will see this kind of peaks. Whenever there is an oxygen attached to a carbon uh, immediately this hydrogen comes somewhere around 4 ppm. So, you should keep that in mind that some peak which is coming around 4 ppm 3.5 to 4.5 typically comes because if there is an oxygen and that oxygen is attached to the carbon and this hydrogen is attached to that particular carbon. So, an hydrogen attached to a carbon which is in turn attached to an oxygen uh, typically comes somewhere around 4, 4 ppm. For example, let us say you have a methyl group also attached to an oxygen. Suppose, this is an O like in an ether an example which you will see now in the next few slides. In that situation also this methyl will not come here, but it will get downfield shifted and it will come somewhere here. That is because this R is now an oxygen group and that pulls the electron towards itself and this hydrogen becomes de shielded. Now, if you go to the, uh, the double bond the sp2 the uh, ethylene uh, ethene groups you can see there again there is a downfield shift. Remember we discussed this 
that uh, the sp2 the hybridization state of the carbon is an influencing factor in chemical shifts uh, so because of that now with this hydrogen now becomes uh, more downfield shifted uh, and it comes somewhere between in this particular is a broad range of chemical shifts uh, when it comes to now the amides this is very uh, typical in the case of many organic pharmaceutical compounds or in the case of peptides in the proteins you have amide functional groups and they always come somewhere from 5 to 9 ppm and this depends a very much on the pH value. Similarly, if you look at this here, this is an hydroxyl uh, proton, you see the range goes all the way from 0 to 5 and that is because it is very strongly dependent on the pH and the solvent. If there is an hydrogen bond with the solvent, it will go downfield shift, uh, if not it will be upfield shifted and similarly based on the pH. Similarly, here CO and H2 have hydrogen bond possibility with solvent and because of that they have a wide range of chemical shifts possible, but remember again they are typically in this range. So, you will rarely see them this particular hydrogen in a amide coming somewhere here in the methyl. So, that would not happen. Similarly, this OH group will not show up in this side, it will be somewhere in this range. Typically, the OH groups uh, you will see in that particular 3 to 5 ppm. Now, coming to the aromatics, it is a very typical aromatic functional uh, chemical shift range. So, for any aromatic functional group it is very easy to recognize an aromatic group based on the peaks which come here. So, very rarely, uh, very rare, I mean not many functional groups show peaks in this region except the amides, but if, the, if you know there is no amide in your molecule, uh, then you can be fairly sure that the any peaks you get in this range region is coming from the aromatic uh, peaks, aromatic groups. And aromatic groups also have a very peculiar uh, uh, peak splitting because they have a lot of long range coupling compared to aliphatics. Uh, so, therefore, the peak multiplet structure is also looks uh, different or little complicated compared to aliphatic and there are also effects like strong coupling and so on. So, uh, mainly what happens typically you can do is if you want to just simply identify that there is an aromatic region you just you have to look for peaks in this particular uh, range and of course, that given that if you know there is no amides. Now, the aldehydes and carboxylic acid protons are very, very downfield shifted and that is again very easy to find them out. Uh, and this is <coughs> again remember we saw this magnetic anisotropy concept and we saw that hydrogen comes in the D shielded region and of a in aldehyde group and that because of that this shifts very much downfield away from all the other hydrogens uh, around 9 to 10 ppm <coughs> very characteristic and carboxylic acid hydrogens again very characteristically come around 11 ppm, 10 to 12 ppm. So, this kind of uh, uh, idea about different functional groups where they occur uh, is very useful in just to keep in mind. Remember, we have not exhaustively looked at all possibilities. Uh, these are just simple broad ranges <coughs> for majority of the functional groups uh, uh, which is typically in seen in organic compounds, uh, but for a more detailed uh, analysis or more detailed uh, uh, values for each and every functional possibility you have to go to uh, you can refer to Pavia spectroscopy by Pavia similarly by Haas Fibrolin uh, they, they have exhaustively they have tables of chemical shifts for uh, a wide range of functional groups and substitutions. Uh, but for our uh, course uh, for basic analysis interpretation uh, we will only be looking at this set of functional groups. So, now let us start looking at uh, uh, analyzing the spectrum. So, what we are going to do in today's class is only look at a few examples examples of molecules where we again we know the structure, but now our uh, thing idea is to figure out that this structure how do we interpret the spectrum. So, which hydrogen corresponds to which peak and so on so forth. So, the first thing as I said we should know the rough molecular formula again remember this is a structural formula we do not need to know this if I just know that there are 3 carbon 6 uh, 7 hydrogens and that is enough, but that is what we will take up in the next class. But in this class we will see now that given a structure how do we interpret the data. So, this is the spectrum typically again this is a schematic drawing this is not a real experimental spectrum, but close to an experimental spectrum in terms of the value and peak multiplet, uh, but this is uh, very good enough for us to uh, get an understanding. So, now if you see here we are seeing uh, remember the first step is to figure out how many types of protons are there. So, that was a uh, step number 1 and in step number 1 here we see there are 3 types of protons because these 3 peaks are basically 1 peak this is only j multiplet 
which we look at the next step, but first this is one particular this is one peak this is this bunch of peaks is one peak because these are all coming from J multiplet, but overall the peak is coming from one hydrogen type and similarly this is another hydrogen type. So, there are three types of hydrogens in this molecule uh, which is consistent with this molecular formula. So, here you see we know that there should be three types and therefore, that is what we see here. Now, you can see that now because of this effect of shielding uh, now what is happening is that this bromine which is electronegative. Uh, will pull away the electron density from here. So, this hydrogen will be the most de-shielded hydrogen atom and we have seen this in the inductive effect uh, concept uh, where we saw the effects of chemical sh induction uh, inductive effect on chemical shifts. So, you see this will be the most de-shielded this will be next in the line and um, little bit more shield de-shielded compared to this and this is the least de-shielded right. So, because this is farthest away from bromine. So, you do not expect much shielding here. So, you see now based on this idea you can directly in fact right away say that this particular peak which is the most de-shielded should correspond to this, this is which is intermediate should correspond to this and this is the most shielded is corresponds to this. So, in this particular example yes it is was possible to do that, but we will not take that approach we will look at more detail how this multiplets can be analyzed. So, first thing we have seen there are three types of hydrogens. Now, the next thing we will see is the multiplet structure. So, you see what is happening here we have a triplet we have a sextet means 6 peaks and we have a triplet again. So, now for here we have to keep in mind uh, that we have to look at the, the Pascal strangle. So, we will see that here now in the we will derive the Pascal strangle. So, we saw that if you have a peak if you have if you have a one proton one hydrogen attached to a carbon which is attached to two hydro another hydrogen. So, then it will give me a doublet right. So, this is 0.5 that is 1 is to 1 that is 0.5 is to 0.5 I mean, but the relative ratio is 1 is to 1. Now, if I have another hydrogen here then each one will get further split and because the j value is same this is this j value is suppose same as this j value because with as they are same you will end up with a triplet that is 1 is to 2 is to 1 that is what we saw in the Pascal triangle. Now, let us say you put one more hydrogen here. So, you will end up with further splitting. So, 2 so this will be 0 0 0.125, 0 0.375, 0 0.375, 0 0.125. So, this is coming from the Pascal triangle which we saw. So, that becomes 1 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1. So, that means, if I see a quartet in my molecule this is triplet. So, if I see a triplet in my spectrum where you see, you see in this particular case we are seeing in two, uh, two triplets here which means this particular hydrogen which I am looking at is attached to two hydrogens I mean coupled to two hydrogens. Therefore, that particular hydrogen is getting a triplet and if you see a quartet it means that particular hydrogen what we are seeing is at uh, coupled to three hydrogen. So, therefore, that hydrogen has become trip quartet. Now, we can continue this further. So, you will see the next step you will get as 1 4 6 4 1 for a quintet and if you consider if you continue this Pascal triangles further you will get 1 5 10 10 5 1. So, this is 6 peaks this is called a sextet and you can also get 7 peaks if you have 1 6 16 20 sorry 15 15 uh, 6 1. So, you see what we are if you look at this picture now what we are trying to see here is 1 2 1 when I have I can simply add 1 plus 2 and I get 3 similarly this 1 plus 2 I get 3. So, what you do is one simple way to remember how to generate Pascal triangle is simply write 1 at the both corners and in the middle you take one step before and add up those numbers. So, for example, I will put 1 and 1 on this side take 1 plus 2 which is 3 1 plus 2 which is 3. So, I get 1 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1. Now, you look at this next step again I put 1 at the edges then I add these two I get 4 I add these two I get 6 I this one gives me 6 this means gives me 4 this one gives me 4 and I get 1 is to 4 is to 6 is to 1. So, in this manner <coughs> you can actually uh, so, in this manner you can actually calculate this Pascal triangle as long as you want. Typically 
this six that the six peaks or seven peaks this is the max you will need to go because beyond that the number of protons goes up very high and that may not be possible in a structure. So, one should basically try to uh, remember uh, work out what you get for a coupling to one hydrogen, two hydrogen, one is doublet, two is triplet, three is quartet, if it is coupled to four it is quintet. So, I pl n plus one rule up to about six protons this is usually the maximum you will need to go about. So, let us come back to this molecule here. Now, here we can say that this is a triplet and this is triplet because this is coming from uh, okay. Uh, so, before we go to this as I said the next step was to look at uh, the integration. So, from the integration it turns out that this particular peak this three peaks what you are seeing here contains two hydrogens this particular six state contains two hydrogens remember six state does not mean six hydrogens it means only the multiplet, but the total area under this peak is KV corresponding to two hydrogen and this turns out to be three. So, when we now 2 is to 2 is to 3. So, one of the rule of thumb uh, uh, a simple way is that whenever you see a 3 it has to be a particularly a typically a methyl because a carbon cannot be attached to more than 3 hydrogens if it is attached to 4 it becomes a methane which is not what we will see in organic compounds it will typically have methyl is the maximum. So, 3 when you see automatically it is basically a methyl group. So, that is what also we expect from this structure there is a methyl here. So, now there is this methyl could be this and also if you look at the chemical shift value it is coming in the range which we saw in the last slide it is in the range of 0 to 2 and that is typically for a methyl. So, you see directly we can now identify a methyl peak here in this spectrum and that methyl peak is coming corresponding to this and it is showing a triplet and triplet is showing because this hydrogen is coupled to these two hydrogens. So, if you apply the n plus 1 rule this methyl is therefore, expected to be a triplet. Now, we can go to the next uh, hydrogen which is 2 here uh, and that is coupled now to this side 3 and this side 2 and if you assume that these couplings are same uh, then in typically it will be the same if it is a linear molecule uh, and uh, the in a organic mole compound. So, if you see 3 and 2 is 5. So, 5 plus 1 the n plus 1 rule says I should expect 6 peaks that is sextet that is what you see in here you see you get 6 peaks here. Therefore, and that 6 peaks if you look at the relative ratio it is coming out to be in this manner that is 1 this is if you consider this small peak as 1 this is roughly 5 times 1 is to 5 10 10 5 1. So, 1 is to 5 to 2 tens 5 1 this is what we saw here in this case. So, this is what uh, happens for a uh, 6 peaks. Uh, multiplet J coupling. So, that is what is coming from here. Now, if you go to the next CH2 which is the most downfield shifted now that CH2 is only coupled to this hydrogen uh, these two hydrogens. So, n plus 1 rule says that for this hydrogen these two together this is equivalent I would expect triplet and that is what you see here and the area corresponds to two protons and that is what is two there are two hydrogens. So, in this manner uh, this correspondence we can now establish between this molecule and this spectra spectrum by considering all these factors. Now, let us look at another example this is what is shown here. Now, let us look at another example uh, let us say we have this particular molecule uh, there we have a long chain, but if you see here there is in center there is an ester group. Now, what happens is because of this ester group this side of the hydrogens are not interacting or coupled to this side. So, you can think of this ester group like a river uh, in, a, in a village the one side of the village is disconnected from the other side uh, from the village because of the intermediate functional group. So, this is what basically is happening here these two hydrogens will not be coupled to this side, but of course, within them they are coupled to each other by J coupling and we these two are coupled to each other by J coupling. So, now let us analyze the spectrum of this molecule how it looks. So, this is what the spectrum is shown below. Uh, here we are showing only from 0 to 5 ppm uh, because that is where all the, the peaks are coming. So, now if you look at this count the number of peaks here remember the first step is to see the number of protons. So, you see now 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and here also numberings are given there are 6. So, there are 6 types of hydrogens and 6 types of peaks we are seeing here 6 peaks we are getting here. Now, we can look at the multiplet pattern next step the multiplet pattern is showing that there is a triplet there are 2 triplets here remember again the chemical shift they are coming somewhere between 0 to 1 therefore, immediately you should consider 
that there are uh, this is coming from methyl ok. But of course, relative integration we are not uh, showing here uh, this in this particular slide, but uh, this triplet remember triplet and methyl one should not confuse triplet is something else and methyl is something else a triplet is coming because of the neighboring hydrogen and not because methyl has 3 hydrogens. So, methyl having 3 hydrogens is different that is that is reflected in the intensity of the peak whereas, uh, having a triplet or a quartet etcetera that depends on the neighboring hydrogen. So, in this particular 2 hydrogen this methyl groups you see what happens is there is a 2 hydrogens here. So, therefore, each of this methyl this side and this methyl both of them have 2 hydrogens coupling I mean the methyl hydrogen is coupled to 2. So, according to the n plus 1 rule each of this methyl shows gives me a triplet and both the triplets come somewhere here because they are not attached to any electronegative group. So, therefore, they come in the original 0 to 2 ppm range. Now, if you look at this particular uh, peak here 6 tet because it is now having uh, 4, 2, 3, 5 peaks. So, 5 plus 1 uh, 6 rule. So, this is basically a 6 tet. Similarly, if you look at a quintet here this particular hydrogen uh, is having basically 2 plus 2 peaks here. So, 2 hydrogens here, 2 hydrogens this side. So, this hydrogen is coupled to 4. So, 4 plus 1 rule is quintet. So, this is what you get in this particular case ok. Now, these numbers are the integrations. So, basically uh, sorry this is not the integration this is indicating the hydro the atom number. So, this is number 3 here. So, now if you look at this particular this hydrogen now it is coupled only to 2 hydrogens on this side. So, there is nothing on this side. So, obviously, therefore, you will expect n plus 1 uh, 3 peaks and that is what you get at 3 peaks here ok. Now, if you uh, look at this value of chemical shift this is coming away from all the other peaks why is that is because of this oxygen here. So, remember the slide where we looked at roughly the chemical shift ranges uh, we saw that anything which is attached to oxygen comes somewhere around this 3.5 to 4.5 and therefore, this is a kind of outstanding peak which is standing away from others and immediately one should then conclude that this is because this hydrogen is attached to a carbon which is attached to oxygen. So, there is a slight typo here this there is a carbon which is attached to ox hydrogen. So, keep that in mind that there is a carbon which is attached to the hydrogen that carbon is attached to oxygen and therefore, that hydrogen comes uh, way downfield at uh, around 4 ppm. Uh, now, the remaining hydrogen is this now this is also attached to an electronegative, but this is carbonyl this is not directly attached this carbon here which is not shown, but there is a carbon here and that is not attached directly to oxygen unlike here it attached to a carbonyl group and therefore, this comes somewhere around 2 to 2.5 and again this is something you can see from the slide uh, we showed previously uh, the rough value is somewhere here. And now this shows a quartet, quartet means it has 4 peaks I mean multiplet 1 is 2, 3 is 2, 3 is 2, 1 and why is that quartet coming that is because this hydrogen those both are equivalent and these are coupled to 3 hydrogens from the methyl peak. So, according to the n plus 1 rule you will 3 plus 1 4 peaks. So, you expect a 4 multi peak multiplet structure for this particular hydrogen. So, this is how uh, the you can see the correspondence again between a particular molecule and the peak pattern or the chemical shifts we get. We will look at one more example now that is the last example uh, where uh, this is now another long chain long uh, linear chain molecule. So, let us again look at the same way. So, you have basically that you have NMR spectrum. So, you have to count the number of protons there is number of peaks. So, I get 1, 2, 3, 4 this tall peak and 5. So, there are 5 peaks in the mo mo spectrum therefore, I expect 5 different types of hydrogen and the 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So, you see that is matching with the structure I have 5 hydrogen types and 5 peaks. Now, if you look analyze the multiplet structure that is a J coupling because uh, sorry uh, we, we are we are going to the Mm, the we are not gone to the integration yet. So, if you look at the integration the, that part is not shown here, but what is the idea here is let us analyze the J multiplet pattern. So, J multiplet pattern if you see let us scan from this end from the right hand towards the left on the right you get a triplet and again remember this is coming between 0 to 2 ppm. So, this most likely has to correspond to a uh, methyl group uh, ok and this is a methyl group. Now, this methyl group then if it is a methyl group 
it is at it is coupled to two hydrogens of course the integration value will also should match so integration is 3 here which is not shown so this three the three protons which show a triplet they should be attached to a ch2 and only then you can expect to get a triplet for this methyl and that is what is shown here so you have a, this this ch3 is corresponds to this peak here because only then it will give a triplet because it is attached to two protons i mean attached in the sense coupled to two protons so this ch3 is now this particular peak now if you look at this quintet there are basically five peaks uh, here the five peaks basically comes from where so we have to basically look at a particular proton which is having four neighboring uh, hydrogens if coupled to four neighboring hydrogens only then you expect to get a quintet so four uh, hydrogens come can only be from this hydrogen because this is coupled to this side with two hydrogens and this is coupled to this side with another two hydrogens so therefore totally it has four hydrogens coupled and so four plus one gives you five so this particular ch2 is has to be this particular quintet okay now we come to six tet now six tet means six peaks and that has to now come from a hydrogen which is coupled to five protons only when you have five you have five plus one rule n plus one rule which should give you six tet so that is this hydrogen because this hydrogen is now coupled to two here and three here so three plus two is five and five plus one gives you six so this particular hydrogen now is corresponding to this particular multiplet now look at this singlet which is a tall peak and again integration uh, would have revealed that but integration is 3 uh, and that means there is a methyl group but why is a methyl group coming at 3 ppm that is because this is this methyl group and it is attached to an oxygen the CH is attached directly to an oxygen and because that this CH3 methoxy group is an ether comes very downfield shifted relative to other methyls and is coming around 3.2 ppm 3.3. Now, if you look at the last peak, which is a triplet, is has to be from the remaining CH2. We already looked at all the other peaks. Remaining is this. You can see this CH2 is coupled to these two, and that will give you n plus one three peaks. Remember, because of this oxygen here, this hydrogen and this hydrogen are not coupled because they are far away. So therefore, this hydrogen is only coupled to this side two hydrogens. So n plus one says triplet three peaks and it is coming again downfield shifted means it is coming below 3 3.5 that is because of direct attachment to an oxygen. So therefore this is coming downfield shifted and that is where we saw that comes from 3.5 to 4.5 if there is a direct attachment to an oxygen group. Okay. So this is basically we saw now three examples uh, in this class uh, how we can analyze uh, the speak pattern, the multiplet, the integration and so on. Uh, but remember we always had the molecular formula already with a structural formula and we basically try to do one to one mapping. We looked at the correspondence between the spectrum and the molecule but this is a fortunate case where you already know the structure but many a times the problem in hand is that we do not know the structure we only know the formula we know how many carbons we know how many hydrogens roughly we know the total composition uh, not the exact structural molecular formula but we know the, the uh, composition of that and based on that our job will be to deduce the structure molecular structure given the spectrum given the integration given the chemical shift values and so on. So that is what something we will analyze in the next class we will look at a, a few examples where we will not have the structure in hand we will only have the just the overall composition of the molecule how many hydrogens carbon uh, and then we will based on that we will go to the NMR spectrum uh, we will look at the multiplet structure we will look at the integration and we will look at uh, the chemical shift value which is also useful at times and we look at uh, uh, the number of types of hydrogens and based on that we will try to deduce a structure and that is basically the most of the time organic chemistry requires is that given uh, that we do not know the what structure compound we have synthesized uh, we want to know whether our uh, whatever spectrum we get from there can we deduce the structure. But sometimes of course you know what you are expecting to get. Uh, when we make an organic chemistry reaction you already know the end product. So therefore in that situation you already know what to expect. So you basically try to then try to figure out which peaks corresponds to which carbon or hydrogen. Uh, but if you extract an organic compound let us say from natural sources uh, then we do not know anything about the structure all you have is it is only the number of elemental analysis. Elemental analysis basically gives you carbon, hydrogen, oxygen uh, and mass spectrum of course you will have with you you may have the IR spectrum 
Uh, but now for now what we will do is in the next class we will only focus on hydrogen NMR spectrum and based on that we will try to deduce the structure.